Hey super friends, my name is Neil and welcome to this episode 96 of the Get Your Comic On podcast. We're here still twice a week at the moment because we're racing towards episode 100, but we're here to bring you a slice of film, TV and pop culture goodness from our studio direct to your listening device. I still haven't quite regained my voice from a couple of weeks ago, so bear with me as I struggle through another episode. But today I want to talk to you about a upcoming documentary, three-part documentary series, which is called Superpowered, the DC Story. You can read my full review for this over on our website, which is www.getyourcomicon.co.uk. But I wanted to give it some time on the podcast because I want to talk about how much I really enjoyed this and was surprised, not just by things that I learned that I didn't previously know, but by how refreshingly honest it was for a um, a studio-made uh, docuseries, uh, you, you know, basically made by the company who owns the company who are being discussed in the documentary uh, so just to say superpowered the dc story will stream all three parts on max in the us from july the 20th i don't yet know where it will air in the uk or internationally but as soon as i know you will know and you have my promise on that it's narrated by rosario dawson and takes an unprecedented look at the enduring and influential legacy of dc comics allowing fans to rediscover the universe of characters as well as the iconic comic book company's origins its evolution and its nearly nine decade cultural impact across every artistic medium now of course if you've ever listened to this podcast then you will know that i am a fan of dc comics yes obvious i am people call me the dc shill i i love dc comics so this is kind of built for me as a fan to look back over the history and there are some wonderfully uplifting moments in there which really did as i will say as i get to it choke me up um particularly in the second episode which is just injected with so much hope around these characters but the reason why i i really wanted to discuss this more than just doing a written review is because and you know, this was something that some that several people, in fact, said to me when um, I talked to them about having screeners for it. But several people have kind of said to me, you know, when it's when it's a documentary being made by a Warner Brothers company about a Warner Brothers company, what are the chances that they do anything other than sort of really hype themselves up? And this isn't this isn't a hype documentary. It really does. It, you know, we don't spend a huge amount of time focusing on any negatives but any missteps that the company has made in its history are dealt with which is refreshing it's not just hey we started here we invented these characters this is where we are now it's all awesome we're great here's what we do there are discussions about and we'll pick up on it properly in a second but there are discussions about things which you maybe would avoid if you were giving a wholly positive view of your history and it's nice and it's refreshing to see a company who is able to reflect on the fact that there are missteps in their past and for that reason i think this this makes it a really compelling watch because it is it's not just the corporate view of you know patting themselves on the back there's there's a lot more to it than that which is which is really nice to see i think that in the age of the comic book movie domination it's become all too easy for fans to forget that our favorite superheroes didn't begin life on the big screen you know, whilst these huge multi-billion dollar rabid fan bases devour each new appearance by characters like Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman sticking to DC, when they're on the big screen or even on TV screens or animated movies directed, you know, the directed DVD animated movies from DC, which are now up to 40 plus films, how many fans really know the stories behind how each of these characters actually came to exist? And that's the kind of question that Max... Uh, Warner Brothers and DC are taking a closer look at with this three-part documentary series, Superpowered, the DC Story. The series, which is completely and utterly effortlessly narrated, I think I just said effortlessly, I just invented a word, narrated by Rosario Dawson, takes a really deep dive on the history of DC from its earliest days right through to its present day. And each of those three episodes that make up the docuseries have a slightly different approach, looking at DC through a different lens, starting out with its past and focusing on its origins in the first episode. In the second episode, looking at its uh, diversity and spreading out from just the you know the 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 trinity the the white archetypal characters and introducing characters like black lightning and then finally 
the third episode looks at how the company has weathered the storm of coming into the digital age, cultural reforms, the way that we look at gender and sexuality and things now, and seeing how the company looks to the future from where they are and how they endure. So, you know, it's unsurprising that we start at the very beginning in episode one with the humble beginnings of the comic book. So we get to learn just about how the genre came about, how DC first came about nearly 90 years ago now. And Rosario Dawson walks us through a history lesson uh, on the invention of the superhero and how this influenced on the inception of DC in its earliest form. And of course, in doing so, that means that Superpowered needs to tackle the histories of the first of DC's characters. So that's Superman and then Batman, and then moving into Wonder Woman. So we learn about the Man of Steel and how he came to be. Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster looking at uh, Batman, so Bob Kane and Bill Finger, and then with William Moulton Marston for, for Wonder Woman. And as I was saying, this is where Superpowered becomes really charmingly honest. It's It really doesn't have that tendency to shy away from the controversies, and so it does discuss how Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster fell out with the publisher and separated themselves from that, how Bob Kane for many years was single-handedly credited as the creator of Batman with Bill Finger, not recognised until much more recently, and then also touching on William Moulton Marsden and his polyamorous lifestyle and how the various women in his life, which at the time were certainly looked at as something controversial, but how each of these wonderful women with whom he surrounded himself became part of the creation and the the initial development of Wonder Woman. And all of that is seen through the lens of this company trying to make a name for itself and striving for success in this burgeoning new industry. The structure of Superpowered also really helps to keep it fresh across all three episodes. So it doesn't simply start at the beginning in episode one and then work through kind of moment by moment through to the present day at the end of episode three. Each episode is broken down into chapters and each of those chapters focuses on a specific aspect or character from DC's history. So it might, you know, where it starts out with Superman, it will begin at the Superman's creation and then move right through to where he is in the present day and a great example of that is Wonder Woman so in the first episode we pick up with William Moulton Marsden we learn about him we learn about how and why he created Wonder Woman to try and stand against the male archetypal superheroes and then it jumps through we see a new interview footage with Linda Carter we see Gal Gadot obviously in there and it discusses how Wonder Woman went from the page to the screen but then there is this wonderful interlude with Joelle Jones, who is a legendary comic book artist and writer in her own right. And she discusses the genesis of the newest Wonder Girl slash Wonder Woman, Yara Floor. And so you get these moments from the past, moments from the present, and then looking to the future right throughout each of the three episodes. So you aren't simply kind of thinking, well, I want to fast forward to a year that I'm interested in. You, you will look at it by character and it never forgets that the story that it wants to tell is about how the characters were created and their comic book origins. This isn't a documentary about DC on film. It's not a documentary about DC on TV. It is about the heroes of DC who created the characters of DC. As touted in its synopsis, the docuseries features over 60 new and archival interviews with the industry's most prolific creators, actors and executives. So I'm just going to give you a, a non-exhaustive list, but you've got Melissa Benoist, Greg Berlanti, Tim Burton, Mike Carlin, Linda Carter, Henry Cavill, Kaylee Cuoco, Gal Gadot, James Gunn, Patty Jenkins, Dwayne Johnson, Michael Keaton, Regina King, Zoe Kravitz, Jim Lee, Zachary Levi, Damon Lindelof, Jason Momoa, Christopher Nolan, Robert Pattinson, Christopher Reeve, John Ridley, Margot Robbie, Bruce Timm, Michael Uslan, and Mark Wade, amongst others. Many of those contributors do appear through older press junket footage, so don't expect to see a new interview with Henry Cavill talking about Superman. It is footage of him from, I think, the Batman vs. Superman junket, and similarly, Margot Robbie is from one of the junkets. I think it's from, you see her discussing how exciting it will be when the Suicide Squad is released, so that's from that junket. But then there are new interviews. So as I said, Linda Carter is there with new footage, Jim Lee. There are plenty of people from across DC who are there to talk about it from a fresh perspective. Given this, that the series, though, as I just was saying, looks more closely at the comic book beginnings of DC and its characters, it's refreshing to see candid interviews with writers and artists discussing their love for these characters. 
In episode two, Superpowered moves on from DC's humble beginnings to illustrate how the company diversified its roster of heroes with the introduction of characters like Black Lightning. You very much get a focus in that second episode on racial diversity and how DC weathered an era where comic book companies were being forced to uh, censor themselves, they were unable to do some of the things they had done in the beginning, how Batman comics were becoming much more like the Adam West series rather than the, the kind of darker influence that was there in the beginning, and how DC was able to adapt its stories to fit with this more diverse crowd of comic book readers that were out there. And part of that is making sure that it keeps that focus on the creative driving forces at the company. So, you know, plenty more Jim Lee. We get to see Dan DiDio, who worked with Jim for so long. Jeff Johns is in there. Tom King appears at certain times as well. And so the series continues to jump back and forth uh, across this sprawling timeline to follow characters' genesis from from page to screen. Uh, well, not that all characters have appeared on the screen, but many of the ones that they choose to focus on have at least gone from comic book to TV, if not comic book to film. And then you move into the final episode where Superpower looks at the culture climate in the 2020s to show how DC has kept up with the times. And this... Uh, so I have I have many favourite moments. It's great to tre- retread the history of DC in episode one, although I knew many of those details already. And then in episode two, the, the kind of climax of episode two really, as a DC fan, makes you kind of want to throw your fist in the air and just, you know, it's... It's really empowering to see how much they love these characters. But then in episode three, there's this incredibly refreshing point of view where the company and the filmmakers kind of give the middle finger to DC's critics. And I'm not talking about critics who don't enjoy the movies. We're not talking about that. We kind of don't grapple with sort of critical success or failure of of things that the company has done so much. I'm talking about the people who look at moments like when DC announced that John Kent was going to be bisexual or Tim Drake was going to be bisexual and introducing these diverse characters in terms of binary, non-binary, male, female, gender, you know, gay, bi, trans... You know, the whole spectrum of the way society is reflected these days in real life. And DC grabs the opportunity to to kind of mock those who mocked the company for that commitment to diversity. And it does it in this really wonderful way. It uses footage of newsreels from, you know, news anchors saying... I mean, it, it part of it looks at Superman and when they changed his... Um, his... Uh, catchphrase to drop the american way from it but then also looks heavily at the day at the kind of the morning after dc announced that john kent was bisexual and looks at how the media particularly in america uh, reacted to that by kind of saying it was awful and it's this just ridiculous look at all these people joking and saying it's the end of the company and then lo and behold dc is going from strength to strength in terms of its comic books and it's fun to see them taking that which was a pop cultural watershed moment and saying here's what we did we stuck by our guns we stick by diversity in our characters and we always will and looks back at its history to show how it maybe didn't in the humble beginning but has strived to across its 90 year history and it's I, i just loved to see them doing that because it made me even more proud to be a dc fan And a wonderful through line in the series is the hope that DC's characters bring and their love that the creators have for them. As I said, at times it really choked me up seeing the fandom that has shaped my own life being shown so much adoration by the very writers and artists that I've grown up idolising myself. And the refreshing honesty is just so admirable. You know, there's no misstep which is left unmentioned. And whilst they're never focused on in great detail, any admittance of imperfection just seeks to show that DC's real heroes, you know, the Tom Kings, the Mark Wades, the Philip Kennedy Johnsons, the Jim Lees, are as human as the rest of us. And I know there is chatter about the trailer for this on social media because you don't see Zack Snyder and he does not appear in this documentary. I don't think he even appears in stock footage from kind of behind the scenes on set. I could be wrong. There's certainly no interview footage with him, but the the events around Justice League are touched upon and rounded out nicely by explaining that he was able to go back and create the Zack Snyder's Justice League cut to reclaim that moment for himself and so you know he is in there he is a part of DC's history on film and that is reflected in episode three as they look at where they are and where they go to in the future 
there's no massive talk about the dcu james gunn is included but he's included as the director of suicide squad and as a fan of dc rather than as a dc studios head so don't expect this to suddenly bring you revelations about what's coming in the future there is some chat about where comic books will go in the future but really it's more about creatively how dc wants to keep itself at the forefront of pop culture and so I gave this uh, I gave this a full five stars and said, Superpowered is an honest and in-depth look at the history of DC Comics. Each episode looks at the company through a different lens, taking us from an expansive look at its history to its hopeful nature and through its trials and tribulations of staying at the forefront of pop culture. A fascinating, honest, much what must watch for DC fans. As I said, all three episodes will stream from July the 20th on Max in the US. If you're going to be at San Diego Comic Con, then you can catch the first episode during the Warner Television panel, which is happening on the Wednesday night on the 19th. So the day before, everything will stream on Max itself. We don't yet know when this will come to the UK or to international markets, but I will be keeping a close eye and will let you know as soon as I can. Are you going to check out Superpowered when you get the chance? Get in touch with me on social media and let me know your thoughts if you've watched the trailer, if you're excited for it, or what your thoughts are about it. You can find me on all major platforms at Neil Vag, that's N-E-I-L-V-A-G-G, and you can find us at Get Your Comic Con. And I will be back very, very soon with another podcast. There were more casting announcements for Superman Legacy, so I think we really need a deep dive on where my thoughts are with where that film is going to go. So I think that might be next. I think I might have said that last time. We will see. But... In the road to episode 100, we are getting very close. Please do remember to get in touch with us if you want to send us a birthday message because we are celebrating our 10th birthday in just two weeks' time and also our 100th podcast extravaganza live from San Diego Comic-Con. So until next time, stay safe, stay well. Bye!